with the sound that same the same the rents and don't go red like me the way. You have Buddha, Muhammad, but none of these are like our God. For history and time itself has proven time and time again that we serve the living God. Tell me who is like the Lord.
Give God praise.
Good, good morning. Go ahead. Sit down. Right. Good morning. Happy Easter. Right. Happy Easter. All right. All right. Now, I know, I know a lot of you, especially parents with kids right now, are, have uh, collected a lot of plastic eggs and eaten a lot of chocolate rabbits, right? But let's not forget what it, we're really here for, right? Right? Okay? Right? So that's what Easter's all about. All right. I ask this every week, and you can go ahead and turn that slideshow on, Landon, if you want. I ask this every week. Don't be shy. But if it's the first time in this building for a church service, raise your hand for me. I want to see. Raise your hand. Who do we got? Well, there you go. Right there. Right there. Very cool. Very cool. I love that. I love that. And whether it's your first time, you're going to notice, right? Whether it's your first time, your second time, your hundredth time, when you came in, you had a card, a con connect with us card right there on your chair with a pen. If you could fill that out for us, and on your way out, we're going to have a basket over at the coffee bar. So if you go out to the left, we'll have a basket or two out on the right on the table. If you could drop those in, there's a box there. You can throw the pens in there too. But we just want to connect with you a little better. We want to hear what you like, if you have some prayer requests, anything. And we're going to perfect those cards as we go, but we want to start doing that. So if you could take some time, fill those out and drop in the box for us, we would love that. Thank you. All right. What else we got here on a Sunday morning? Oh, hold on. I got to turn it on, right, Joe? Yeah, okay, I know. I know, that happens. It happens. All right, did you know, right, that there's two ways to give? A lot of people say to us, you know, I, I came to church and I didn't have any cash on me and you didn't have a card read or anything like that. So not only can, when we take the offering, right, but you can give online too. And see that QR code? I'll leave that up there for a second now. But we're going to have a few placards, a few 10 cards around here. So you can just scan that for you guys into technology. You can just scan that with your phone. It'll take you right to gracegospelfellowship.org to the give page, and you can give online too. So don't feel that you have to give here if you don't have anything with you. You can give online, and that's on our website too. So I'd love that. Now, here's what we're going to do. It's kind of busy. There's still people coming in out there. We're getting full. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to take about 30 seconds. I want everybody to stand up, look around you, left, right, and front, back, shake somebody's hand, say good morning, say happy Easter, and scooch into the middle of your section, right? You guys want to play some songs just for about 30 seconds, just something, right? Stand up, scooch in, say good morning to somebody, shake somebody's hand, say good morning, happy Easter, and move into the middle a little bit. People are still coming in. All right. I think maybe we'll start doing that a little more regular. I think everybody kind of liked that. I did too. I did. Amen. I like that too. All right. Let's look at a couple other things, right, that are happening this week and that have happened last week at Grace Centers of Hope. 27 Fairgrove. All right. This house has been in the making for a couple of years now. And it's coming to an end. And we're going to start moving families, women, and kids in there, right? So we would love to have you come for our ribbon cutting of this house. It's Friday, April 12th, 10 a.m. It's on Fairgrove Street. It's about two blocks from here. If you need some more information, not sure where that is, see one of us. We'll let you know. But we'd love to have you. We'd love a great turnout. You're going to get to tour inside that house and see that 110-year-old house come back to life. You'll get to meet some of the people moving in that house. So please join us for that. Uh, also, remember a couple Wednesdays ago, we did an offering, and we gave it to the kids, to the youth group. And we did it so they could go to that movie, An Ark in the Darkness. Well, we gave them a little extra money, and so they may put good use to it. So they also went to bowling. They went to laser tag. You can see Natalia had a great score up there. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd clap for that one. Uh, I don't know about that. 
but anyway. But the kids wanted to make that slide, and they wanted to say thank you to everybody that gave that offering a couple Wednesdays ago. How about a round of applause for the kids here in our church? Right. Yeah. Speaking of kids, this is AJ on the right. And AJ and her mom, she's a local Girl Scout. She came a couple weeks ago and volunteered at the men's mission for dinner with a group. And when she found out that we had a women and children's program, she asked, this girl, not even a teenager yet, asked, well, do the, what do the kids do for Easter? Well, I don't know. We're not exactly sure what we're going to get to get done. And she said, well, I would like to go get everything so they could decorate eggs. So her and her mom came to the women's center, brought all the eggs, the vineyard, all the kids, all the kits. Here's our kids and moms decorating eggs, right? Look at that. So how about a round of applause for AJ and her mom? That's pretty cool. That's really cool. And now we're, while we're talking about the Women's Center, you guys had Spirit Week, didn't you? Right? Yeah. Look at all the, all the women are like, uh oh, here it comes. Here it comes. So here we, get, we had a kind of wild hair day, right? Cool hair day, right? I'll leave that up there for a minute. You guys can look at that. Pick out your favorite hairstyle. All right. And then they had a lip syncing contest. Now, I wish I had a video of this, but I don't. But I got a few pictures, right? And here they are doing some lip sync. Look at that. Were they decent? Were the lip syncers pretty good? Yeah, were they? Look at, I love this picture here. Look at that. Yeah, I got them moving everything. All right. So how about a round of applause for the women over there having fun all week, right? I love that. All right. One last slide. We talk about all the miracles and all the awesome things that happen around here just all the time. Here in the church, in the men's center, the women's center, aftercare. But one of the coolest things is when somebody gets their GED, right? And we've had almost 60 graduates come through our program and get their GED. And we had another one last week. Where's Kat at? Will you stand up? I don't see anywhere. Where are you at? Where's Kat? You got to be here. Is she not here? She even knew I was doing this. Now, maybe Kat's downstairs, but guess what? I got a picture of her. How about that? So how about a round of applause, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Super proud of you, Kat. All right. That's a lot of cool stuff that happened. We're glad you're here on Easter. We're glad you're joining us. Make sure you come back. Fill out those cards. Drop in on a basket. Have a great Easter. Let's take our offering. Let's do our praise team. All right?
That was good. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you.
You may be seated. This is our old men of grace tune from our first CD, uh, Oh, the Blood of Jesus. Hope you enjoy it and happy Easter, everybody.
Just a few today. Pastor has us in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7. The Lord God will help me. Therefore, I have not been humiliated. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. We are over in John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 4. I have glorified you on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And then we're going to hopscotch over to John 19.30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come before you on the highest of all holy holidays, Resurrection Sunday. Your servant John Calvin once said, quote, All the wisdom of believers is comprehended at the cross. For it is at the foot of the cross that we sinners shrink to our true size. The great work accomplished by Jesus Christ through his planned crucifixion is the redemption of your people. It is conclusive, no matter what angle you approach, that the cross and resurrection were absolutely necessary if any one sinner is to be saved. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is the uncompromising and essential doctrine that you used and intended, even as the Old Testament prophets proclaimed, by which so undeserving a salvation is secured. Your servant John Owens, writing on the death of death and the death of Jesus Christ, has set us captives free from the penalty of our own depravity and sinfulness. Matthew 26 tells us there is no other way. Matthew 27 asks why God has forsaken his only son. 1 Corinthians begs the question, death, where is thy sting? And Luke 24 asks us why we are looking for the living among the dead. For your cross at Calvary was an offense to the Jews and the Gentiles. Cursed is the one who hangs from the cross. Moral individuals despise it, but it is peace, love, mercy, grace, and salvation to those who have trusted Christ for their all in all. It is the power of God's redeeming love that he would forsake his only son for such a worm as we. It is soup to nuts the triumph over sin, death, and harsh but accurate judgment by a thrice holy God. It displays humility that only a God-man could show. It is our boast as believers. Lord, keep us celebratory this day because of Christ. Death has died. Christ has conquered the grave because we know he lives and make intercession for us, his sheep from the right hand of God. Keep us moored and anchored to what Christ has accomplished, for it is finished. To tell us die. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. What a great beginning service we've had today. Spirit of God's in this place. He is risen. I, uh, I saw Senator Bishop here today. That's right. Is he up there? There he is. I'm delighted to see you and your family here today in our house. The man has done so much for this place and been such a friend. I was uh, invited to speak on the floor of the house in Washington, that dreaded place. Uh, and I got to do that. I, I, I will tell you this, you must never say to me, you can't mention the name of Jesus. Amen. Because sure as you say that, it's going to happen one way or the other. So, uh, I went to the house and I, I, I got, here's a, this is a little story since the Senator Bishop family's here, I'll tell you. Pam and I went to Washington and, and I got lost up there in the house. I couldn't find out how to, I couldn't find this senator's office, and uh, we got lost in the basement, and some young man came out and said, you're, I think he was from Arkansas, maybe. He had a real southern brogue to him, and he said, uh, well, I'll take you to um, Congressman and Bishop's office. So we were going along, he said, uh, why, why are you going? I said, uh, Pam said to him, well, uh, my husband's gonna pray, lead the prayer in, in the house. 
And he looked right at us, and here's what he said. You are going to pray in the name of Jesus, aren't you? And I did. I used every name of the Lord in scriptures that I could find in that uh, 90 second. Uh, I, uh, I had listened to different ministers praying and I heard the Mohammedan guy praying. He, he used all kinds of names. I didn't know who that God was, but I knew who this one was, Jesus Christ, and got to mention him. All right, anyway, we're glad to have you. I might not have should have said all of that, but we're glad to have you and your family. Um, and uh, we're gonna have a wedding in this building of one of his sons and daughter-in-laws. We're glad to have you too. Wow, this is such a great day. Every Sunday is a great day to me because I know he's risen and he's alive, but this has a very special uh, day, and it's a special day for many of you um, because I, I want to show you why on, on video. Ten years ago today, we moved in. Argos building in Pontiac. Well, it turned into a nightclub for many years until today. Julie Bonovich is in Pontiac for Grace Gospel Fellowship's first service. There are so many people here for the first service that even the Oakland County Sheriff's Department had to come out here to control traffic. People filled every pew, left no chair empty, and took up just about any spot along the wall you could stand. Workers got as much of the remodeling done with the new Grace Gospel Fellowship Church that they could before this Easter Sunday. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Amanda Luther's family donated the building in November. The longtime parishioners knew exactly how they wanted to transform the old clutch cargoes when they bought it. To help fulfill pastor's dream that has been long standing for 20 something years. The property sits only 65 feet away from the old church. And one time, on a late night walk, Pastor Kent Clark said a little prayer. I raised my hand toward uh, the clutch cargo building and asked God to give me this building. Fifteen years later, his prayers were answered. The hallelujahs were rolling on the insides of me. I was so grateful to God. Leaving the old church will make more room for Grace Centers of Hope, a homeless shelter for women and children. They shared the building. Now we can increase the capacity at the mission and help more in need, which is really our goal is to help as many people as possible. He's come through with a miracle here. This is a miracle place. From Pontiac, Julie Bonovich, 7 Action News. Well, we saw the wings. Isn't that great? Absolutely. And you know why? Because he's risen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. He walks with me and talks with me a long life's narrow way. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Amen. Amen. Well, some may be here saying, well, I'm not sure um, that he is alive. Well, let me tell you, I just talked to him a couple minutes ago, and he's doing fine. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's sitting on a throne. Uh, yeah, he arose, he arose. The guy sang that today. We all sang that, and we worship him today. I'm going to be uh, brief. How many of you believe that? Raise your hand. 
No, I really am. In John 17, 4, <clears throat> which is the Lord's Prayer. By the way, that John 17, verse 4, that whole chapter is the Lord's Prayer. Now, you hear that as our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not, that's the model prayer. This truly is the Lord's Prayer. And here's what he said in that chapter 17. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I hope that you who attend here regularly are well aware of this fact. Jesus is the victorious Christ. He's the conquering Christ. He came to save his people, Matthew 121 says. He, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Christ did not come to do something or other, in some way or other, affects somebody, maybe. He came to save his people from their sins. <coughs> say it, hallelujah, he arose. Okay, I want you to say it as well as me. He is a victorious Christ. I came to finish the work which the Father gave me to do. If you're here and converted and know Christ, I mean, you've really come to know Christ. This is not just Easter Sunday. This is you know he's alive. And there's joy in your heart because he lives today. You know he lives. And as we sang in the earlier service, we rejoiced, did we not, sensing his presence uh, with us in the service. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, would say things like this, I must be about my father's business. My father's business. I must be about my father's business. You know the father, the scripture makes this clear, and we proclaim this message here called the covenant of grace, that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit together did covet together before there was ever a creation. Do you know that? Do you understand that? This is not a haphazard thing. It wasn't an off-the-cuff thing. This crucifixion of Christ and his burial and his resurrection and his ascension and his coming back again was planned before he said, let there be light. Do you know that? Amen. This is a long time plan. I must be about my father's business. So every time I see or every time we meet and one of you come to know Christ, and how many have come in the last 10 years to this place and heard the good news gospel? That was on purpose. You see, God had ordained that before the foundation of the world. And Jesus Christ came to save you. Now, sometimes people come here and they associate us with across the street great sinners of hope, and that is our baby over there. But, uh, you know, we're known as the Attic Church in Pontiac. That's okay, because Christ came to save sinners. Yeah. And, and I will tell you this, if you're here, whoever it is is here, I know this about you, you are a sinner. That's what the Bible declares. And if you're not a sinner, and I don't know of anybody who is not, you eliminate yourself from the coming of Christ into the world. 
because he only came to save sinners. Can I see if we have some sinners here who have been saved? Buddy? Well, my, my. Welcome to the sinner church. But aren't we a happy group? Aren't we a happy group? Right here. Right here in downtown Pontiac. People often say things like this to me, which I count it to be an honor, but they say things, oh, yeah, we've heard about that church. <laughs> what have you heard? I hope you have heard this, that Christ Jesus came into the world to do a work. And what a work that was. All of you who raise your hands, it is a fact. You have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. You miss the mark. You have missed the mark. And in order for you to go to heaven, this is just a fact. In order for you to go to heaven, somebody's got to pay your debt, but not just anybody. It must be a sinless one. And before the world, God had covenant with Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit to bring you to a Savior, the Redeemer. Isn't that something? You didn't come to Christ on your own. You were drawn by the Spirit of God. You were drawn to Christ. Amen. amen. Don't be not amen in me here. I'll, I'll have to start amen in myself here. You were drawn to Christ. Here's what the scripture says. Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love and in tender kindness have I drawn you. You came to Christ because the Spirit of God drew you to him, not on your own. It was not by works of righteousness which we, which we have done, but by his grace and mercy he has saved us. And that faith was not of yourself. You see, this whole salvation plan, I thought about how, how can I tell it all today? Well, I, I think I can tell it all this way. This whole shebang, this whole deal was God's work. He thought of it. He planned it. He purposed it. Sometimes people say to me, you know, you have a lot of miracles over there. Oh, this is a miracle place. And you know why? Because he's a miracle person. He's a wonder worker. We just got our, what, 58th house or 59th or 65. There's so many I've almost lost. And we're about to open this beautiful house uh, in a week or so here. Uh, how good God's been to us. Somebody said to me last week, what are you trying to do, save the, save the city? Every last person in the city. Yes, the, the rough places in Pontiac. You know, when I came here, I thought this. I used to think as a young pastor, I want to, I want to be in a big fishing hole where there's lots of sinners. Look at you. <laughs> I'm there. We're here together as sinners who've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Did you hear us sing today? Oh, the blood of Jesus. Some of you have seen the story of the crucifixion this week. You saw the awful pains and you saw the depravity of man as they took him to Calvary's cross and crucified him. And the scripture says they watched him there. They mocked him there. They ridiculed him there. The spit ran down his face. It was nothing but shame there. 
But do you know what he was doing on that cross? You got to go beyond what you see physically. The Bible says his visage, his face was marred beyond recognition. When I was a young pastor, I read that passage and I said, how on earth will I be able to explain to them that his face, his visage, was marred beyond that of any man? I thought about all the men that have been blown up in wars and battles, how their face must have been torn up. But you see, this was a different kind of death because Christ died a penal death. Oh, I want you to get that. He died as a substitute. He died in the stead of sinners. He died in the place of sinners. See, he suffered your hell and mine. See, I'm not going to hell because my debt's been paid. Has your debt been paid? Amen. Amen. I don't go to church and feel guilty about, you know, my sins. All of that used to be laid on me. I used to feel lots of guilt. But my friend, if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. There's no judgment. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. That means there's no judgment. When it's time for me to die and stand before God's judgment throne, I will stand in God complete in Christ alone. I know that for certain. I'll be able to say here when the roll is called up there. I'm here because of that one with the five wounds, the one who died in my stead and said this. This is what he said. I'm glad he said this. From Calvary, he said this, it is finished. <laughs> Dr. Christopher read the verse where he set his face like a flint. I've heard people say, I've heard preachers say that Christ would have bypassed the cross if he could have. No, he came to die. He came to drink the bitter cup. And on Calvary, he drank my damnation dry. There is no judgment. In that. But it gets gooder. They took him down from the cross. He said, it's finished. With a loud voice that he's finished. They didn't take his life from him. You do know that, that his life was not taken from him. No man took his life from him. He could have caused 770,000 angels, I think he said, seven legions of angels, and destroyed this world. One word from him, and everybody would have been defeated, right? But he came to die. That's what he came to do. He came here on purpose set his face like a flint, went to Jerusalem. He knew his, don't you know, I understand, I've heard people say, he just didn't understand, he shouldn't have gone that day, he shouldn't have gone there. Oh, that was the day from all the eternity had been set and purposed. Amen. Can you imagine what happened in heaven when he said from the cross, it is finished. All the ones that were already up there waiting, and he paid the debt, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What a day that'll be when our Jesus we shall see. We shall look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. What a glorious Savior. You know, I often tell this little story. I kind of made it up myself. Um, so Satan visited after Christ uh, was buried. Now, I don't have a verse of scripture for that, so don't, don't hold me to it. I'm making some of this up so you can get happy. Uh, and Satan came to death where he was buried. The first day he had been buried, and Satan said to death, you got him? And death said, 
Oh yeah, he's still here. No, no movement down here. Good. Second day, Satan came back again and said, you still got him. Still got him. No movement down here. Oh, but that third day. <laughs> Satan came to death. Is he there? Uh, something's happening down here. His grave clothes are folded and lying here in the sepulcher, and the stone is rolled away. Not so he could get out, but so we could get in to see he is not there. He is risen indeed. And this is what I love. And he ascended back into heaven. This is the full gospel story. He ascended back into heaven. You know I need a lawyer. You know I'm such a mess up. I really am a mess up. Say, oh, pastor, you shouldn't say that. You're our pastor. It's too late. I've already said it. <laughs> and it is true. I am a sinner. I'm saved by grace. And my sins have been paid for. But I need an attorney. I need a mediator to talk to God for me. And Jesus Christ, the one who died in my stead, was buried and arose from the grave, sits at the right hand of God the Father and pleads my case. Forgive him. Forgive him. That's why I'm going to heaven, you know. I got a clean slate. Amen. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? That's what Romans 8 said. Who will, who will charge you with sin? If Jesus paid it, who's going to charge you? If I went down to, to Macy's and put this on my charge card and Pam went down there and paid my charge card off. And then they sent me a bill and said, hey, you owe that. That wouldn't make me very happy. Jesus Christ paid your debt. He wants you to know that. And Jesus Christ pleads what he did on the cross of Calvary. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. I know, I know that this has been a simple story and a simple truth. He finished the work. It is finished. It's over. He was about his father's business. He came, paid the debt. By the way, I thought this week, how could I describe the work? the work of taking away sin. And the Old Testament scripture says he made an end of sin. He just didn't move it out of the way. He made an end of it. How can I describe the one who suffered my hell and the hell of you who are trusting him? There's no need for you to go through life dreading. And, and what religion does tries to lay guilt and condemnation on people. The good news is this, it is finished, it's over, it's done, he arose, he ascended, he's in heaven, making intercession for sinners. All right, let's stand together and praise our Lord in song. I told you it wouldn't be long. My, it's so good to see all of you here. We appreciate you being here. You're always welcome here at Grace. This is the message we proclaim. Christ came to save sinners. Today may be the day that you have trusted him. And you say, for the first time, I've been religious all my life, gone to church all my life, but I've never heard that story, that it's finished, it's done, it's accomplished. And never have I looked to Christ alone. But today, 
I see him as Savior and Lord, and I want to confess him. We bid you come and confess him. I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> Father God in heaven, uh, Father, we praise you. We thank you for all that you've uh, done for us on the tree of the cross and uh, overcoming death, God. Uh, death, which is so incredibly powerful. You have overcome that. And if you can overcome death, you can overcome uh, anything, God, that could possibly stand against us. And if you be for us, who could possibly be against us? Father, we pray uh, that you empower us through your Holy Spirit. Uh, that you've given to us, that uh, just as you were sent into the world, you would send us as we leave these four walls of this church building, God, to actually be your church, uh, to, to be Christ to others who are lost and hurting and suffering and in desperate need of the good news of the gospel. Father, we praise you and we thank you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 